Okay. Hi. Welcome to the threshing floor. I'm Matt. This is my lovely bride angel. Um, we are uh, we are here to separate wheat from chaff in our search for truth in world events, Bible studies, and just life in general. So uh, this video is actually going to be part of an introduction to another video that we did the other night. Um, that was really our first time. We were just trying to trying out camera, trying out you know where we were sitting and all that. And obviously we changed it to here instead of there. Um, but uh, we, I just we got into one of these conversations, and I just grabbed the camera and and hit you know record on it and started recording just as kind of a run through. And then we decided. That was a really good conversation to actually put online. Um, so you miss about the first 10, 15 minutes of it. Um, and my memory being what it is, I'm going to let her tell you what uh, what we were talking about beforehand because she knows it better. Well, real quick before we get into that, uh, apologies when you do when we do cut over to that other video. The lighting is quite a bit poor. The the audio quality is going to be poor. Uh, but again, like you said, we, we thought that the conversation was so valuable that perhaps you might all overlook that aspect. Uh, so anyways, so what we had started talking about was I had been reading the news that night and I'd gone to, uh, on Facebook, one of our local news sources had a headline that I had seen mentioned in a few other places uh, before over the course of the last month or so. And the headline was something along the lines of 15-year-old girl is in juvie for failure, failure to complete her homework during virtual school for pandemic. Or it, was, it was something, that was the basic gist of it. Girl locked up in juvie for not doing her homework. Basically, you know, during impression. pandemic. You know, that was, that was the, the headline essentially. And before I clicked on it, I scrolled down to just look at the comments and that tends to I, I, I tend to do that uh, and unfortunately I, again I was familiar enough with the case to kind of be like that that seems misleading I, that can't possibly be what the story is about and if it is then absolutely there there should be an outcry there should be an outrage because that is ridiculous uh, comment section comment section so I scroll down to the comic sec the comment section and the first thing that I saw was somebody reacting very viscerally to this headline. Again, understandably so, if that's what's actually happening. Very visceral reaction. Um, but somebody else had replied in reaction to that and had said, obviously you didn't read the actual story because it has nothing to do with her having done her homework. And it struck me that I see this all the time. I mean. I, Almost every single time that I look through the comment section of something having been posted, I see that they have not, a, a large majority of people comment without having actually read what the situation was, read the article, and are not familiar with it, and they're just going based on the headline. And let's all acknowledge here, please, that news sources are trying to get you to click on their articles. They want you to read it. They want the traffic. And so it's great. They don't, they don't even want you to read it. They just want you to click on it so they get the clicks. Exactly. And that's, and that's anybody who's read an, an article title for any even relatively interesting story uh, and then actually read the article, you know that's true. Yeah. You've seen There's that always some level of time. misrepresentation of the facts and of what's going on. And it's just to get you, it's it's the eye candy, it's the clickbait, it's to get you there. But anyway, that's what we get yes. into in the video. And so, um, <laughs> so it, it just struck me how incredibly common it is. And, and it hurts my heart um, because those uh, there's a lot of people who read those headlines and then never read the story and they just move on. Or they share it. And, and they share something not knowing what they're sharing. Um, and so when we sat down to talk, I was like, well, you know what, let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about how we need to be better, and this includes myself. Um, we need to be better at actually researching things, at actually reading the articles and knowing what's going on. Um, because unfortunately, 
a lot of people don't just stop at just reading the headline and reaction, reacting and making a post about it. Oh, did you see so-and-so did this or whatever. Um, often you will have people who will take a screenshot of a headline with a picture to go along with it that is meant to invoke that emotional reaction in you and they will share it. And uh, often you will have people who take screen caps of somebody who commented on it on Twitter and with their opinion of what's going on. And not, having not read the article itself, they will share somebody else's visceral reaction to a headline. And nobody actually knows any of the real details because if they did, then they probably wouldn't have responded that way. So. The video that we're going to connect to this, um, where you pick up is where we're just talking about how we need to get away from just reading the bait, reading the meme, reading the shared snapshot of other people's social media. Um, we need to stop reacting to other people's reaction and actually find out the details of what's going on. And we get into a bit of just how can we do that? Well, we can look at different accounts from different news sources of this same story to find out the details and to sort through the muck of bias and opinion. And we and those are the things that we get into. Yes. We don't need to rehash yes. here. That's all I was but we, to um, um, uh, But it, it, it struck me as something that we needed to record. Um, as a, as a good conversation, one, but two, it also, that conversation also speaks to what this channel is about. Yes. It's about genuinely seeking truth in all things, actually parsing through, rightly dividing the Word of God, rightly dividing current events, rightly dividing, uh, um, you know, wheat from chaff, um, so that we can make some really good bread. Um, uh, because that is the bread of life. I mean, that these, these, these concepts are not unconnected in the Bible. You know, they're, they're, they're definite, there's definitely that theme there. Um, and so that's, that's why we recorded that video and, uh, and decided in the end that we wanted to share it with you. Um, but it does require a disclaimer because you basically come in like mid-sentence. Yeah. Maybe mid-thought, if not literally mid-sentence. Um, a little bit here. One more point. So Jesus is the bread of life. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we, even as Christians, tend to take in more of the world, more of these headlines and the, this, these social media posts. Uh, oftentimes, and this isn't speaking for everybody, it's not a blanket statement, but I, a lot of people read a whole lot more of the local news or current events than they do of their Bible. And so when that is your daily bread, uh, and the world is what you become. The, the world is what you become. Nourishing. And so first and foremost, Christ is our daily bread, and um, this skill of being able to rightly discern and read through things um, is applicable across the board, and it really should start in reading his word, it, you know, because that is how he can impart to us these skills. Um, but that being said, if you aren't a believer, then your daily bread is of this world. And so if nothing else, then we pray that you would learn how to better um, parse through these things so that you're not filling your heart with so much, ha so much hatred, um, with so much visceral um, emotion and raw emotion because that's what these these things when taken out of context or misrepresented can really stir up so much hate so, so without further seek ado truth. <laughs> uh, seek truth because truth is out there and, uh, and here's a short conversation by short I mean 40 minutes of, uh, of, of how we got into that so enjoy You need to have a wide variety of sources so that you can more clearly see, just like recently when we started comparing, we were going through which version of the Bible is most accurate. Well, let's go through the most popular sources, the most popular versions, and do just a quick comparison. And when you do that, you are more readily able to see what has been exaggerated, 
what has been maybe taken out of context and used inappropriately, and what are the common, you're able to boil it down and you're able to see those, those bare facts that are common across all of these different platforms. And that will help give you a clearer picture of what actually happened. And then maybe whenever you see, okay, well, this story has these details. Um, this version of this story. This, yeah, this version details. of this story has these details that doesn't this appear in this one. Um, that, you know, okay, but then this third one kind of has a lit, it kind of alludes to this. Okay, so why would this one omit it? Well, okay, then let's look at the source. Well, this is a source that typically speaks from this side or has this kind of slant or angle to it. Okay, we'll take that into consideration. We don't dismiss it out of hand just because we know that. But now we're aware that that doesn't really show those people in that good of a light, so maybe they omitted it. Or it shows their opponent in a good light, and so they omitted it. Or whatever it is, whatever the case is, you're then able to more readily just take those things into consideration and have a fuller picture of not just the story itself of what's going on, but you are better than able to understand outside of what everybody's telling you about these news sources. You then become familiar with these news sources and in the future when you're reading them, you then have this understanding instead of, it's a truer understanding because you've researched it you've tried it as opposed to, well, so-and-so says that this news source presents this angle or is for these people and against these people. You have your own experience to more readily rely on. And each time that you then do this comparison across the board, uh, it builds in your mind, again, where these, these news sources stand. And, and it helps you to filter through some of the bias, again, to get more true information of the situation. Yeah. I actually remember a, I haven't seen it in years, but the, there was a news website that they, they separated based on right and left, yeah. you know, red and blue, whatever, um, that... Uh, there was a button on the page and they would it would kind of lay it out almost kind of like Drudge Report or something like that where it's all the little articles all over um, and if you clicked the button it would flip the whole page and it was all the exact same stories but from publishers, newspapers you know, online of the other persuasion it was like all of the Repu were the Republican, like Fox News and whatever. The same news being covered, same but from news different covered, sources. But from the other angle. That's and it was neat. literally a push button and it would flip. I don't remember what it was called. But, well, that's a shame that you don't uh, remember what it was called because it, it sounds it's, interesting. It's probably nothing to find it. You know, it's, a, yeah. it's probably super easy to find. But, um, but, it's, but it's that idea yeah. of looking at it from, you know, from, from, all, from as many different facets as you can. You get a better... You get a better understanding of what's going on and you can look at it from different angles. That's the thing is that people can't... This is symptomatic, or I don't know, maybe it's symptomatic that people can't have the conversation. I don't know which one came first, the chicken or the egg at this point. Of, did people stop looking at these other sources and reading various sources because they didn't want to hear the opposing opinion? Or do they not want to hear the opposing opinion because they have stopped doing that? Which one came first? Or, I mean, how did that... The answer, the answer just like chicken and the egg, is probably yes. Yes. Um, but that's the thing is, whenever you... Whenever you stop being willing to even sort through the bias of other people to find the truth... You become incapable of it almost. That's a perishable skill. Yeah, I mean, you you've thing. completely you just become instantly offended, and that doesn't help you. It doesn't even help if, anybody. Even if you're not instantly offended, you're dismissive. You immediately shut off all thinking. Yeah. Oh. And 
in the long term, you end up dehumanizing the other people. Mm. And that that's, unfortunately, that that's the long end goal of mm. that is... Look, well, they you don't. have to, if you don't understand, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, is that if you don't understand where the other person's coming from, right, wrong, indifferent, what a, you know, if you agree or disagree is all irrelevant, if you can't at least understand where they're coming from, then there's, you can't make sense of the way that they think unless you start applying intentionality. You start giving them reasons why they did th- in your own head yeah. you're not telling them anything. you know the other the other side the other the, the opposing viewpoint you have to start assuming what it is that they meant by what they said or did yeah. if you do not fully understand it then you will yeah. apply your own understanding and when you it, apply your you own will, understanding you will automatically you do a make disservice to the other person because you apply the worst possible thing well if I said that oh, the, no, no, no. and not even the worst possible thing it doesn't have to be the worst possible thing you could apply, apply well it's the worst possible thing to you though no 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 you could apply good intentions what you think there would be good intentions that part, I mean, nine times out of ten, yeah, people tend to apply bad intentions when they don't understand what somebody else did or why somebody else did something. Um, but they, uh, but either way, even if you were to apply good intentions on the person, what you have done is apply intentions that do not necessarily comport with what they want and often, or with what they often meant. Often don't. Yeah. Very um, often don't. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the vast majority of the time. Because you don't understand why they did it. Yeah. How could you possibly apply their intentions? It's a shot in the dark understand. when you start trying to apply. Yeah, when you don't understand. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, I say nine times out of ten, it's a lot more, it's a lot more often than that. Um, uh, you tend to assume the worst of others. Not you, yeah. but you know, people in general they seem, at least the squeaky wheel seems to intention, seems to automatically apply <coughs> the worst possible intentions because we are adversarial by nature. We need, we need to have a good guy and a bad guy, and I'm not going to be the bad guy, which means I have to be the good guy, which means they have to be the bad guy, which means of all the good intentions I have, they must have the bad intentions. I and don't that's, think that's people think it through like that. No, it doesn't. No, that's it's a the, split it's the second. natural process yeah. of humans. That's what I'm saying is we're we're naturally adversarial, yeah. and so all of that is just part of how we are. Um, hey Matt, why are we naturally adversarial? Because <laughs> we're um, sinful and broken, and in because desperate all have need fallen of short of the glory of God. Desperate need of Savior. Um, I was actually talking to the kids about it uh, at dinner. That, uh, Kate, you want a good example of natural no, adversarial? No, no, and, and yeah, and they were um, <laughs> they were. We've been trying to get them to stop playing bad good guys and bad guys so much because they go so dark so fast like I don't even know where you get this from it's so dark um, uh, but they uh, they started playing good guys and bad guys again and they were just talking about it at the table like it was a big deal that they had a bad witch doing bad things to people and it's just like uh. yeah. so I started talking to him about it and I was like um do you know why? And I was mostly talking to Finn because he's the one who seems to be snapping to things lately. Thank God. Um, <laughs> uh, to certain, he, he seems to actually be thinking things through a bit more. I have heard wonderful Juliet's things still, about the age of seven, younger, yeah. especially with little uh, boys. Juliet's still younger, um, and uh, and so she's just not there yet, um, and she has a, a more natural, tender heart. Uh, but where he's he's a, he he actually I think is getting more critical thinking in, his, in the way that he has. Anyway, um, uh, that, um, that there is no such thing as a good guy and a bad guy. And that sounds absolutely insane. Um, there is one ultimate bad guy. And, and let's, let's not beat around the bush about that guy. Um, that he is ultimately uh, in direct opposition to God, um, and that the makes worst. him that makes him the worst. That makes him legitimately the devil, the enemy, 
the, the, adversary. The, the adversary. It's literally what the Satan means is, is the adversary, uh, which is one who opposes. And if God is all good, then the one who opposes him is literally all evil. <laughs> like it's just that's just the way it is. But when it comes to humans, we try to we we try to do the good guy bad guy thing. And that's what all the movies and all the books and all the Yeah, but no human is, is capable of being a good guy. Yeah, none of us are able to be good until we've been conformed to the image of Christ. And we are not good. God is good. We now, just conform to In our to fallen him. nature, even without re, uh, regeneration through Christ, we are capable of doing good acts. Yeah. I mean, but we are not capable of being be good in good. and of ourselves. Yeah. Um, and uh, the thing is, is you have we are all sinners. So we are sometimes sinners who choose good things, and sometimes sinners who choose worse things. Yeah. But we are always sinners. We are always sinners. Yeah. Um, not, the the Jimmy, what's his name? The clear the stage guy. Jimmy Needham. Needham. There you go. His other song that we that we liked. It's it's weird. It's the the sin in all my virtue. No vice, matter how, vice or vice virtue. in all my virtue. Um, the the you know yeah. there's the lead line song. on that is there's vice in all my virtue and it's it's no all matter my how sins good. Go to private school. All my sins know the golden rule. There's yeah. vice in all my. Or all my yeah. sins hold the door for you. There's vice in all my virtues. Yeah. Um, yeah. No matter how good we want to be, there is still going to be sin in it somewhere. Um, not that we are incapable of being sinless. We are capable of being sinless, but not on our own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have to be conformed to the image of Christ because that yeah. he is sinless. Yeah. So when we are made new and conformed to the image of Christ, then we will be glorified and we will be sinless at that point. Yeah. And it's not incapable of sin anymore. It will just be lacking in sin. And that's but it's, a whole it's other easy to fall to into that trap about. of thinking good guys versus bad guys. Yeah. Because you look at the news and you're like, anything, people so viscerally react. And I, I say people, I, I viscerally react when I read the news and I have to remember Jesus. Um, it takes effort. Yeah, because... I, there's that innate part of me just wants to lash out and go, that's wrong. He's a bad guy, or she's a bad person, or so-and-so is evil, or uh, even to that extent. But I have to take a step back and I go, I need to pray for that person <laughs> because what they're doing, the action is very evil. That action is absolutely evil. There are definitely good actions and bad yeah. actions. Or that that action is not the that's not going to help. That's going to harm. But I don't need to condemn the person as a whole as a bad guy or an evil guy. I need to recognize that while yes, even if every choice that this person does, even if it's worst upon worst consistently throughout their whole life they are acting in evil they are a sinner you want to know what's uh, some examples of this god so many well, but hold on real quick uh, they're acting in evil the choices they make are evil their actions are evil but to label them in my heart and in my head as an evil person shuts down communication, it shuts down relationship, it humanizes them, um, and it, most importantly, as a Christian, hardens my heart toward praying for them. And that's something that we have to be very careful with um, when we start, because the opposite is true. When we look at somebody else and we go, that person's great. They're really good. They're doing all these things. It blinds us. Pastor syndrome. <laughs> it blinds us from their faults, from their sin. It puts them on a pedestal. And then we end up, for one, it does the same exact thing where it hinders us from praying that they would then 
turn away from temptation and turn away from sin and seek Christ uh, because we're to we made an idol of them in our hearts and it hinders in the same way it did it it hinders our relationship with them whether we know them in person or not it, spiritually speaking it hinders our prayer life for them and it's really a detriment when you swing too hard one way or the other and so the label of good guy and bad guy or a great person versus an evil person or a terrible person or however you want to phrase it whenever you start labeling people like that um, either collectively as a group you know, or, individually. or individually you immediately um, you train your you're training you yourself your heart. You're, you're hardening your heart and you're training yourself in how to be dismissive of them yeah and you're literally developing that yeah. skill because you... well I don't have to worry about that person because I know they'll never do wrong or, or I don't have to worry about that person because I know they'll never do they'll right. Never right. Either way, you end up putting them in a place in your heart and in your mind that is no good for you and is no good for them. Because ultimately, as a Christian, you should be praying for both people. And oh. yeah, both types of people. Yeah. I mean, um, and when you do this. Your, your prayer for them is going to be changed drastically. And probably not for the better. No. Because you're going to be looking at them through rose-colored glasses or really dark glasses. glasses. Yeah, stained glasses. Mm -hmm. Blood-stained glasses in some cases. You know. Sorry. Good point. No, that's the, the, the two points. Is the, yeah, the, I had several examples. Um, it comes down to wearing the other person's shoes, but we'll get there in a second. Um, the the, the hero side of it is, um, well, people still do, I think, as much as they always have. But again, that's 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 a whole other conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's true. Um, we were talking about rose-colored glasses, looking yeah. at the past with rose-colored glasses. Yeah. Um, but uh, I had this one wrong for a long time, and I guess I hadn't really stopped to think it all the way through until just now. But the the never meet your heroes um for me it was whenever i started hearing that and stuff i always blamed the hero because he wasn't living up to the standard that he should live up to and that's actually wrong that's not what that that's not phrase what that's is for. even supposed to imply you're, yeah you're supposed to what that what that really should do and it's because the phrase centers around the hero and that's the, and it's wrong. It's not. Never meet your heroes isn't. Never meet your heroes because they'll never live up to your standard. It's you need to understand that your standard is too high for that person. It's another human never being. Never make a hero. Never make a hero out of anyone who doesn't deserve to be a hero. And there's only one of those. Um, there are again, there are people who do good things. You know, firefighters and whatever that you know that rush into burning buildings. Um, uh, military who go out and you know save their brothers in arms in the middle of a firefight. You know, people who jump on grenades and stuff. Man. And um, given the world climate, yes, doctors and nurses no. who go into a sick ward knowing that there's a contagion that they could take home to their families. Yeah. Dude, the whatever the, there are the people, years very ago, brave people. The years ago, the the Ebola, like. Ebola is some scary stuff. Ebola is some scary stuff. Like the people in, in years ago, I mean now. That stuff scary. People now going into villages in Africa and stuff that have Ebola. And, uh, and you know, and, and stories of pastors who go to to uh, care for and pastor a leper colony and stuff. Yep, St. Damien. Uh, Isn't that the saint uh, that needed the... There's been many. Yeah, that, but he was uh, one of the very popular ones. Okay, correctly. Um, I watched a documentary about. Okay, I've seen so many at this point um, yeah. that that go off and do stuff like that. Doctors without borders and stuff. Say, like that. Damien died of, of leprosy after he contracted it after he'd yeah, been there for several and, years. And knowing full well, there was that one. I called him an idiot at the time, but there was that one guy who went to that that island that was that super isolated tribe. And he wanted to go share Jesus with them. And everybody's like, dude, they're going to kill you before you even get off the boat. 
and they did. Like he like he went there and was never seen or heard from again. <laughs> and you know, and, and and that you know that's the story is that yeah. you know he, he you know they basically killed him before he ever made it to shore. Um, but that you know that that is legitimate bravery. All of those things are legitimate bravery. There's a little bit of stupidity in bravery, yeah. um, but it's not. It's you know that's that's what it's not stupidity. It's just um, uh, having a genuine, heartfelt desire to do right and uh, and seeking that out. Um, but the, the the examples I was going to give earlier of, of walking in someone else's shoes is literally take the most evil person you can think of. Everybody thinks Hitler. Um, but actually stop I've and read the consider. Bible, I can think of some, some more people of outside much. of Hitler. <laughs> I can think of, I've read the Black Book of Communism, I can think of a lot of others that have done some stuff. Um, and, uh, uh, and, you know, on all sides. Let's, let's be honest, because people are bad on all sides. Um, but people who do terrible things, um, stop and think for a moment that they genuinely believed that was for the best. This was getting into, we were talking about Margaret Sanger earlier, whenever I did study several people like Margaret Sanger, I studied you know, eugenics there for a little while and wanted to really understand what was going on there. And I do not agree with it at all, but I can see it from their perspective of, I'm just trying to make people better. And, and what's wrong is people, their idea of what's <laughs> better. Yeah, well, no. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, like the end result and, and stuff is, is bad. And the way that they go about it, like, it's, like there's no doubt the actions that they want to take are absolutely barbaric and horrible. Um, you would literally want to end an entire race of people. Like, this is not good. Um, uh, but the idea that they're genuinely trying to work out what they perceive as the best possible outcome. And, and, and to think of them that yeah. way, you go, yeah, your actions are horrible, yeah. but I feel for you. Yeah. Like, I get it. it the, the part that we have to step into as a Christian, where this ties back in, is <coughs> we recognize that where their vision of what was best fell short... So that it's not his vision of what's best. No. It was they tried to do it in their own power, through their own definition of what is good and what is evil, and it never works out. When we try to shape this world according to what we deem to be the best and the worst, mm -hmm. we make the worst of it. Unintended Every single consequences. time. Unintended consequences. Unintended consequences. And it's because the there is only one. There is only one true definition of good and evil. Yeah. And it is found in the Creator. Yeah. In what He deemed to be good. And what He deemed. By definition of anything that opposes the good that He deemed to be good, that is by definition evil. Mm. And when we try to make our own moral standards, when we try to make, when we try to reshape this world in our image, yeah. and we come across unintended consequences because we don't know about. Literally, we don't know. Yeah, it's, it's always the response is, "I didn't know that was going to happen." Well, that. Isn't that's kind really of the good point. enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's but that's the kind point. of the point. If you defer yeah. to somebody who not only has a clear definition of what's right and wrong, but who actually knows all of the potential <laughs> uh, potentialities yeah. for what could happen, going with his plan is always best. Yeah. And, uh, and knows what's going to happen regardless of potentiality. Yeah. He doesn't know poten he doesn't know just potentiality, but he knows actuality. Yeah, exactly. What, what will happen? Um, open theism aside, um, <laughs> that uh, uh, that he knows all possible things and uh, and understands it. Yeah, this is why we defer to him as Christians. That's that's. This isn't about 
anyone's truth. This is about his truth, which is truth. Um, it it's is not his reality. truth versus so and so other God's truth or other the, you know, theology's truth. No, this is the one truth. This is the truth, and it's up to us yes. to figure it out. Yeah. It's, it's, up, it's up to us to find it. Yeah, and there is no excuse for not finding it. He's giving us, given us ample information, ample evidence. Mm -hmm. And based on all of those things in reading his word, we have to do our due diligence to think through getting back to our original point here um, the Lord gave us minds to use and while he did give us emotions the emotions are more of a they're not meant to control us and when we allow our emotions to control us, when we read headlines and give a visceral reaction and a visceral comment and a share and a rage post or what have you, um, we are allowing our emotions to rule over us and nothing but sin can come from that. Well, and it's emotions are valuable. They are profoundly but, valuable. They're an amplifier for truth or for untruth. They're also they meant to be used as a warning system. When an injustice is done, your reaction to that, mm -hmm. your, your, your empathy, your compassion, your rage to a certain extent, although it's not Tells supposed you to be. Something, well, uh, it, not anger. to act out of it. Your yeah, anger. Be angry, do not sin. Be angry, do uh, not sin for the for the anger of mm -hmm. man does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Yeah. Thank you, James. Um, so I mean these they're warning systems, they're amplifiers, they, they they help you in building relationship, they help you in using discernment. They are absolutely a gift to be used appropriately, but they are not a gift to be ruled by. Well, because they, there's a mind without a heart has no volume, but a heart without a mind has no direction. Yeah. You know, like it, like it's, it just and, meanders and screams and yells and, and, and cries and, and, and hugs with absolutely no abandon to it. Or, or with a with all of it. Um, whereas a mind without a heart just, you know, it's a it's a voice without a microphone. And, um, and, and history yeah, swings way. wildly, you know, where the population swings from heart to head to heart to head. And it's it's those times when you can marriage the two that you see the most prosperity. Yeah. When you see the most compassion and the most Uh, appropriate use of the intellect along with the compassion to right wrongs and to set things up for the betterment of the society and, um, and unfortunately we've passed from a time I believe of, of reason of, of intellect and stuff now we're passing into a time of very heightened emotion or emotions we're passing are into we're there. We are we are here, yes. And it's very, very tempting to try and combat that with reasoning and with you know and intellect and, and to battle the heart with the head. But you can't do that. Just as as ineffectual as or ineffective as battling the heart with the head and the head with the heart. You have to marriage the two. You have to recognize that just going up to somebody and, and spouting statistics and, and spouting all of this information, all this head knowledge, isn't going to touch their heart. However, you can't come up to them and simply just, engage with the heart either. Yeah, it has to be a balance of two. Because then you're affirming all of the things exactly. that you know are wrong. Yeah. And so you have to step with them, step up to them, love them. And, and reach out the hand 
and gently step them through and to why, you know, the why. Um, At first, genuinely hear them out. Absolutely. Well, what's actually going on? Let's get to the heart of this, and this this comes back to finding and, well, truth. Well, but that's that's you know, what I'm saying. That's what that that's what that approach is. Working toward you know, finding out what what they perceive as the truth, yeah. and then coming to an understanding together of what the truth really is. Yeah. If it's what they perceived as truth, then fantastic, you yeah. know. And but if it's not, gently guiding them along and working with them on the way. Um, because you have to find the truth also because the truth isn't what I believe the truth isn't what you believe the truth is the truth and it's up to us this is where it gets back to reading across the board from different sources getting out of your echo chamber getting out of your own head about what you think is right and what you think is wrong and who it's okay to listen to and who you shouldn't listen to but to genuinely um Become a person who is open-minded because right now a lot of people are very closed-minded and that's not as an insult That's simply they that's literally patient. have closed their mind to things that they don't want to hear They don't want to know about that or they don't want to hear your side of the argument or so-and-so sides of the argument mm-hmm. They want to believe what they want to believe and they want to listen to who they want to listen to and we cannot be that way uh, there is no growth to be had in that kind of mindset. There is no love to be shared in that kind of mindset. Uh, because those who simply affirm what somebody else wants to hear, they're not loving that person. That is not what love is. Uh, and that's another misconception right now is that, well, if you don't agree with me, then you don't love me. If you're not for me, you're against me. And it's, it, it's very much an us versus them mentality right now. Uh, and we have to discipline ourselves to not become closed-minded. Because when we become closed-minded, we become heart-hardened. Yeah. And we are of no use to them or us. And we're certainly of no use to God. You know, he can use us. No, we're because still he's fantastic. He we're, can use us. We're useful to him, just not in the way we want. To. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> not in the way that he calls us to be. That's the thing is, it's it's not the way that he calls us to be. He can still absolutely use us. Uh, he can use Hitler. You know, he can make absolute beauty from ashes, but that's not what he's called us to be. Um, and if we are really truly seeking as we ought to be to glorify him and to love and obey him through loving our neighbor then we have no choice but to make those deliberate steps to being more open minded and open hearted and vulnerable I mean there's such a high level of vulnerability and humility and we have to be ready to be wrong we have to be okay with being wrong which is something that the world right now cannot stand and that, that they don't to, want to be proven wrong which is part of the reason they won't listen to your arguments yeah that, i was gonna say that goes that goes back to the to the entire discussion here of, of it's not about my truth it's not about your truth it's about the truth yeah it's and, not and it's something you have to seek. It is not something you already have. Yeah. And that's and and you have what have I been saying lately? You're wrong. You cannot possibly be right unless you just agree with the one who is right. And that's the and you, you have to be willing to start from the point of humility of I'm wrong. If I come up with something on my own, I am wrong. Period. Hands down. Every time. I'm wrong. And and from that, you go, well, if I'm wrong, and I know I'm wrong, there has to be right. And it's not in me. So I need to go find it. And then you start seeing things that way. You start reading articles that way, where you start 
you know, seeking actual truth. The world would be a very different place if people stopped caring so very much about being right. And it's a harsh quote, and I've seen it all over the internet. And there is, there's a lot of truth to it with not a lot of grace. But for the point of truth, facts don't care about your feelings. Good and the bench. word of God, the word of God does not care about you wanting to be right. It does care deeply about your feelings. Yes. But fully knows that you're not right. <laughs> and we should not be so focused on being right that we are so willing to forego the truth just to be right. Just because you're right doesn't make you correct. No, other way around. Just because you're correct doesn't oh, make you I'm right. I'm sorry, I got it wrong. That's fine. <laughs> it seems appropriate. Just. Just because you happen to be correct does not mean you are right. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's, that's a better, that's a more accurate description. People are so focused with being correct mm -hmm. that they don't care if they're right or not. Right. They are so focused on being correct. That's and everybody true. thinks they are the smartest person in the room. When everybody knows that's me. Um, that's not true. The only time I'm right is when I agree with the one who is right. Amen. Oh. So if you stuck around through all of that, we commend you. Thank you so much. And uh... anyway, leave any comments below, um, and uh, we'll see you next time on the questions. <laughs>